Welcome to the final edition of the Blue Ridge Bobcats Coaches Show here on Bobcats TV alongside Vice President of Operations Jimmy Milliken and Head Coach Floyd Tex and Lika. I'm Brett Wiseman. Coach, we'll start with you. Very, very successful Saturday night, I would say, finally uh, slaying the Dragons, if you will. Yes, uh, you know, last week in uh, Carolina, now Columbus, I mean, it was... Like we talked about last week, it was now or never, right? Um, the second games, um, Saturdays, both both weeks. It's 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 good to see that uh, the team, uh, you know, uh, were able to pull it off finally, and uh, they've been working towards this the whole season long, you know. And um, we're happy it happened. You know, we would hope it would happen more often, but uh, it's great to see that. Where we are the only team that were able to beat, you know, uh, Columbus in on the home ice in the regulation. So that's a huge success, I believe, for us, this organization itself. Yeah, that that's a big, you know, kind of cornerstone to, to build on into next year. Is uh, before that game, Jimmy Columbus was twenty five zero and one at home. So for the Bobcats to hand them their only regulation home loss of the season to this point, that's that's a benchmark uh, to carry forward. Yeah, it's a major win for us, and it's a major win for the guys as well for their confidence going into this last weekend. Um, the guys has been the last you know month or so has been really clicking a lot better. Uh, Zemi has put some new systems in for the guys, and, and they're they're reacting to that system. And you can tell by we beating Carolina and Columbus, the two top teams in the division. So. The guys are on a roll right now. Yeah, I'd, I'd say so, Zemi. And, you know, like you said, the, the systems that you put in place, it, and Danny kind of talked about it a couple of weeks ago in terms of the structure, it seems like everybody's really starting to, to fully buy in and really understand what you're putting forward. I like what you said. You know, we had a structure all season long, but, you know, we talk about all the time when you're on the ice, no matter it's a power play, um, it's a five on five, and it's, it's a five man unit out there, right? And it, it takes all five guys to be on the same page and, like you said, be bought in. And it seems through the season, you know, we had three, four guys to bought in, but we're always missing that uh, one one player who wasn't on the same page. And now it finally, like I said, it came together and everybody chipped in and everybody was bought in. And it shown on the ice and shown on the scoreboard. And, and it looked like, you know, just like Carolina the previous weekend, it looked like the, the real difference from Friday into Saturday was was that kind of the now or never in guys' minds, that, that they wanted to get that one and get over that hump uh, against a team that then they played ten times prior to that in the nine meetings prior to Saturday. Every single game, all but three of those nine meetings had been decided by no more than two goals. Yeah. So it had been close and tight throughout and we talked about gap control last week. I felt like Saturday night, yes, McDonald and Petrantonio weren't in the lineup, but that doesn't mean that Columbus doesn't have a lot of skilled guys behind that. I felt like it was very structured, very tight through the neutral zone, and we talked about physicality as well. Uh, you guys got to that right away daily with the big hit on Moore, Bohan throwing the weight around early on. You know, When you send that message early and often that you're not going to be pushed around in someone else's barn, that's important. Yeah, I um, agree with you. You know that another um, important fact was like first three, 15 minutes uh, of the game, uh, I was eight nothing on the shots. Um, Columbus did in one shot on the net, and that's where we uh, all the time talking about the first five minutes of the game, right? Keeping keeping it simple and have that great in your game, right? Uh, putting the pucks on the net, having a net front presence, all those uh, details and habits. But you know, you said the physicality. It's uh, we definitely started very, very physical, and then Columbus was trying to match us at the end of the first period through the second period. You know, there was a bunch of fights and stuff, but you know, we came after the second period in the locker room and we said we just have to go out there and be fearless. Whatever it's gonna take, that's what we have to do. And all the guys were on, like again on the same page, and they came out, they came out hard, and they, you know, they finished the job. And something that that both of you had to had to love to see was. Uh, down the stretch of that game, there was the hit on Tattern after the offside, and then the hit on Ford uh, right after he threw the puck uh, over the glass. It really ended up being an advantage for the Bobcats because uh, Columbus was going to get a power play on that delay of game, but it had to be good for you guys to see teammates standing up for one another, Bohan going in there and, and standing up for Ford, and, and McHugh going in there and standing up for Tattern. Yeah, you know, so uh, that's something, you know, every team needs to have, and 
we went through uh, um, different changes in the lineup, and um, as you can tell, and everybody can tell, uh, lately in the last couple of months, I mean, this group hasn't changed. Um, ever since we got Matthew in here, uh, McHugh and uh, Charles Town, like this team, uh, by playing in the same lineup, the same guys were here, and it is the best uh, group we've had here the whole season long, and that's that's the group. Again, all of them are gonna continue playing next year, and if you can see that they are bought in and they are standing up for each other, and they're like a family on the ice and off the ice now, it just it's uh, it's interesting what we're gonna see next season. Very yeah, exciting. One of the Jimmy, go ahead. Oh, so to ask you, uh, one of the bright spots. Uh, from the weekend, I felt like was Nick McHugh picked up a couple of apples, was a goal away from the Gordie Howe hat trick on Saturday. But um, just talk about from when he got here about a month, a month and a half ago now, I think. Talk about the progress that you've seen him make day in and day out. Well, one thing that we've seen uh, when, when he reached out to us, I mean, he basically told us he hasn't played in four years. And so when he got when he got in f- off his flight, he come straight in and jumped on the ice, and you can tell he he was really rusty around the edges, and um, but he decided to skate every day, um, and just get his skating back, get his hand coordination back, and everything. And you can see his hard work is starting to pay off now. He's starting to pick up the apples, like you said. He's he's willing to go the extra mile for that teammate and fight, and 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 he hasn't fared well in his fights yet, but you can tell it's there. And the passion's there, and that's what we're excited about for next year. Is bringing you know getting McHugh back in here along with all the other guys. As Amy said, it's a family now, and that's the way you start it. You start it with a family, and then you build from there. Yeah, and, and as we look back at last weekend and look forward to this weekend, Zemi, it's something that we talked about uh, with Columbus having a chance to lock up home ice. They did that on Friday, but something that we talked about too was the mentality of this team not to quit, not to give up. There's still plenty to play for, and playing spoiler is something fun. And you got a chance to to knock Watertown out of the playoffs this weekend. You know, that's the mindset of this team and always will be. Um, we never quit no matter we're at the first spot or uh, we're at the bottom spot. It doesn't matter. Uh, we're playing until the last drop, and uh, that's what the guys want. That's what we want. That's what Jimmy want. That's what we all are on the same page about that. So it's huge, and it's very important, you know, talking about the identity and the, the mindset this group has. And uh, yeah, it's it's a huge weekend for us. And, again, it doesn't matter who we playing against. we all focusing about us, you know, Obviously, we talk about your the opposite team we're going to be playing against, but the, the main focus is on us. As long as we do our parts and we do our job, uh, we're in good shape. And first time that the Bobcats have met Watertown coming up this weekend. Zemi, what have you seen from, from Watertown on film so far that – you guys can take advantage of. You know they have a uh, they have uh, some skilled forward up front. Uh, you know they uh, they have a good good goaltender Kozlowski who's been here for a little bit. Uh, he proved himself last season in the league. Um, they have uh, some toughness. You know Schmidt Schmidt in the lineup on the back end. But you know it's uh, again we, ha- we haven't played them. Um, they've played some good hockey lately, and uh, you know their season also went up and down. So you know they're gonna coming in hot. They they wanna get that playoff. You know make that uh, last spot for the play off in their division and uh, but like I said again um, it's all about the focus it's all about us here and you know you guys know they're going to be playing desperate trying to to find a way to get into that playoff spot so for you guys you have to find a way to match that desperation yeah we well, know our desperation desperation our mindset is all again the guys coming back next year most of them so we are all fighting for our spots you know every day uh, in and out so uh, it doesn't matter this is middle of the season or last weekend of the season we're, we're gonna go out there and we're looking to win every battle every puck uh, you know get on the scoreboard like we're looking to win those games yeah spoiler alert friday is danny martin's 300th career professional game and jimmy danny somebody that you've known for for a number of years in this league just talk mm-hmm. about the impact that he's made uh, being in and around a, a young team like this. Well, Danny's one of those guys, and I seen it when he was in Danville the year that I was, I came to Carolina, and uh, he was one of the guys that I wanted to get off that team and get get onto the Thunderbirds, and we did that. And uh, he uh, he brought a lot. I mean, a lot of intensity. He played well, and now he's grown a little bit since then. Now he's more of a leader in the locker room, and he's a leader on the ice. Uh, Danny is. Uh, we all know Danny can be tough sometimes, and uh, but he also can put the puck in the net, and uh, that's what we're looking for for Danny for for this year. He did well this year. We're looking for him to step up in this game and and next year. So um, looking forward a lot from Danny Martin. 
and we kind of wrap and put a bow on, on what's coming up this weekend. As we see, we've got the new merchandise laid out, uh, three new T-shirt options for everybody. We've got a limited number of jerseys uh, behind us on sale as well. So uh, a lot of fun stuff Jimmy planned for this weekend. And, uh, of course, we got the camo T-shirts tomorrow night. So uh, Friday night is going to be a lot of fun. Mm-hmm. Friday, you know, bring your camo out. Uh, if you ain't got none, we got, like like he said, we got it here in the den. Buy some in here. We got some koozies and some new merchandise as well. Um, if you come to the gate with your mer- uh, with your camouflage on, you get a dollar fifty off a ticket. So let's pack it out Friday night. This is the last weekend, and and Saturday is going to be uh, pretty pretty fun as well. Yeah, talk about what we've got planned Saturday for fan appreciation night. <clears throat> well, something cool that we're going to do is uh, from three to five, you'll be able to come to the arena and uh, put your name on the ice. You'll be able to spray paint your name on the ice. So we want to say appreciation to all the fans who come out this season and everything and, and supported uh, the Bobcats and everything. And by doing that, you can put your name on the ice and be a part of the game that night. You know, that's one good thing. We're also going to have like a tailgate party outside. And I, we talked to a lot of fans who's going to come out. And when the players get here, they're going to mingle outside with everybody for a little while before the game and all that. And then, of course, at the end of the game, the game-worn jerseys, the black jerseys they wore all year, we're going to auction them off as well live in, in the arena. So yeah, we'll it's going to be a good night. In, uh, outside Section 205. Mm-hmm. So uh, a good night, an exciting night for, for everybody on staff. And Zemi, an exciting night for, for you guys. Uh, on the ice, exciting for you guys to, to go out and play in front of this fan base that's grown into one of the more rabid, more passionate ones in the league over the course of the year. Absolutely. You know, it's been said before, uh, the fan, the fans, it's been uh, the whole group over here has been growing and growing, and uh, they're the sixth player for us, you know. Um, the team feeds off of them. Um, and, again, we will we'll need you guys to come out again and uh, support us, help us out over here. And, you know, we know that the guys will show up for you. It's going to be a very exciting game, too. As you said, uh, Watertown's going in desperate. And when you're desperate, you do crazy things. So it's going to be some really good games this weekend. It's going to be exciting. If you don't have cowbells, we got them for sale. Let's get loud, get behind the boys, and let's get two wins this weekend. Yep, and this is the team that right now is, is sitting in the top ten in the league in attendance and could be on the cusp of the top five after this weekend. And that's, you know, for, for a first-year organization, Jimmy, that's a huge accomplishment. Very, very. Um, I've been a part of a couple of them, you know, Binghamton and all that. And I tell you what, the full, from the from when I got here in December to now, this team has changed. The fan base is so – I mean, they're just coming in droves. The youth leagues are getting better. This is a – I would never thought this, but Whitfield is a bright spot for hockey coming up in the future and I'm, I'm pretty excited about it. I know Zimmy is. He, Zimmy's done a lot of things this year to bring hockey here and everything for the kids and all that. We can't thank him enough of being a part of the youth leagues and, and the camps and all that and he's doing very well and the whole staff, are, they're, just, they're out, in, out and about you know, doing the uh, claw in the reading. That's got, got taken off the, the second half of the season so we're excited with what we got coming up for years to come here in Whitfield. Yeah, not, not just that the adult fans love it but, but the, the kids absolutely love when these when these guys come into the schools, I mean, these kids are just they're mesmerized every time. It's, yeah, it's it's awesome it's, it's, it's awesome to see. You've been to a couple of them. You get to see it firsthand and everything. And you know, Kendra's doing a great job. And and next year she's already got lined up already. People are already calling in and emailing in, wanting to do it for next year. So it's a pretty exciting thing that's happening here. And um, like I said, you know, getting everybody back here and getting on board next year and, and just rolling next year we're going to have big plans with the new arena, with new seating in the arena and everything. It's going to be, it's going to be great. It's going to be, it's going to be a game changer here next year. Yeah, before we continue to talk about next year's Emmy, I have to ask you, how did it feel to get back out there in an actual game Saturday and, and score a goal? Mm. Um, you know. It's been a little while since uh, I had the full gear on, but it's been a little rusty, but uh, it's been fun. You know, it's a, it's a special moment uh, what Columbus uh, organized and this event every year, and you get to meet the guys you've played with or the guys you play against, and again, the actual legends who uh, won, the, won the championship with the ECHL, CHL, SPHL team, with the Cat and Mouse, so uh, it, it is but one big family over there, and again, that's something we're trying to do here, right, build a family and uh, building towards those championships. So. I mean, that, that's the most ideal night you can have. You score a goal, and then you coach your team to a victory. Everything. That's right. Yeah, that's, that's right. That's I mean, as good yeah. as it gets right there. Yeah. So it was big two, big two dubs that we can for sure. <laughs> yeah, Jeff and them over there in Columbus, they do, they, do, they do it right. You know, that's that's a premier organization. 
and uh, they they give back to their legends and, and to Boom Boom. And if you know Boom Boom, I've known Boom Boom for a while, and I know Zimmy's known him for a while. He's a great guy, one of the best in the business. He's just a character, and um, players play for him, and uh, Zimmy's play for him. He he understands. People go through a wall for Zim, uh, for uh, Boom Boom, and and you you starting to see that wear off a little bit on Zimmy and the boys in there. They'll go through a wall for Zimmy as well. Yeah, so. that's something I was getting ready to bring up, Zimmy. It, you know, I, over the course of the year. You know, it does feel like everybody in that room right now is bought into what you've been teaching and preaching all year, and it, it, there's no one they would rather have as their head coach. Yeah, you know, that's, some again, something we've been trying to – I've been talking about since the start of the season, too. That was the most important thing for me was this year one, you know, build that culture here. And I think that's been pretty successful uh, with the way you're looking at it, the way we've been playing lately and the players we have here and the whole organization, you know, the starts from the staff, we're on the same page, goes down to the team. So um, that's very important. And, and you, you talked about, you know, the, the additions on the back end. And, when, Jimmy, when you've seen how far this roster has come from when you got here in December to now, you know, it, it kind of leads me to believe if, if some of these guys would have, would have been here then, this, this might be a different spot in the standings. But it goes to show just what's been able to have been built over the course of that time. Yeah, well, with any expansion team, there's a, there's – there's a lot of work that's got to go into it. Um, you're just not going to build an expansion team and expect to win. Right. You you don't. You start with no core. It's it's all recruiting from the beginning, and so um, from from then till now, you can see the difference. Now we have a core in place. Now year two is going to come up. We've got that core set. We'll throw some pieces in there and be on a whole lot better. So um, it's just it's, it's building. You know, and and what a lot of people don't understand is this league from the beginning to the end. It the league gets better. Right. You start getting college guys in in the second half of the season. A lot of guys, you know, they'll sit at home and kind of do the family thing until after after the new year. And right. then they'll come back out and play and, and, and join the team and whatever, make that team better. So the whole league gets better throughout the year. So with that being said, our team got better throughout the year. Now, I know we lost some players that, you know, some fan favorites here and everything, and um, but that's just the, the part of being an expansion team and rolling through players. Now you've got that core to build off of for next year, and now that's what's going to make our team a whole lot better next year. Yeah, and you, you talked about, you know, kind of the, the differences in this league as opposed to others is you also don't really have – you don't have a preseason. Mm. And you, you, we, we all know how important a preseason can be for an expansion team when you look at maybe a Vegas or Seattle mm -hmm. in recent yeah. years in the NHL. You don't really have a preseason. You have two or three weeks of training camps, and you got a handful of scrimmages, and then, boom, you're playing games that count. So, as you said, you don't really know or have cultivated that core until really the turn of the calendar. Correct. Correct. And then Zimmy could tell you more on this, but it's, 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 it's it, like I said, it's, it's very tough because you don't know your players and everything that you got coming in. Someone was a pick before Zimmy got here. Um, so he had to place them in there and, and, and teach them. And some of those guys just didn't mesh. And it, some of them had just to, go, to be released or traded or whatever. And that's just a, the growing pains of a expansion team. So, like I said, I, I believe. Zemia has done a great job turning this uh, season around at the second half of the year. That's what we expected. Um, we're, we got some momentum right now. We know if we knock these two wins out this weekend, we can go into next season with a whole lot of momentum. Yeah, Zemi, and you know when you look ahead to this weekend, you got the momentum off the win on Saturday. Something that Zach said, Zach Tattern said after the win against Carolina. Remember how that feels. Remember how the win against Columbus feels on Saturday. It'd be an even better feeling to to play the ultimate spoiler this weekend. Correct. Uh, you know, the consistency is that's, again, something what we want to step in and uh, what's been more and more there uh, through the last uh, couple of weekends. But, again, this Friday, Saturday, we're playing home, right? And uh, on the home ice, finishing the season, that's already beautiful. And then, you know, finishing that with two double two dubs would be huge for us. And um, that's, again, the mindset is for all of us here. Well, Jimmy, talk about uh, a lot of the fun stuff we've got planned here uh, over the summer at the at the Apex Center, and talk about what uh, what some of the plans are for next year. <clears throat> well, we have some events coming up. We have the yearly annual Bronco Fest coming up as well. Working on a few shows. We've got one show that's already booked for later in the year. Can't announce it yet. 
Um, and we're just we're working on you know trying to get fairs here. We're working on trying to get some pro wrestling here. We've pretty much got that settled in. Some MMA action in here, and just just use the arena as much as possible to before we put the ice back in in late September. Um, the biggest thing is we start construction here in August on the new seating. The new seating is going to be about 3,700 seats in here, and it's going to make the world of difference in this arena. We pack it out of here. This is probably going to be the loudest barn in the, in the arena, and the guys are just going to feed off of it. It's just going. To, I'm getting chills just thinking about it. Yeah, so yeah, all three of us are. <clears throat> yeah, so that's one thing that we're looking really forward to is getting a new seating in. Yeah, Zemi, I mean, and, and I don't know how many of the blueprints you've been able to see, but you know, just envisioning it in all our minds, it's. You, you do get goosebumps just thinking about the fan base that you've been able to build from from when you got here at the very very start to where it is now to where it is expected to be come next season when that new seating gets put in. This is going to be a state of the art facility and it's going to be one of the loudest buildings in the league. You know it's very exciting, especially when we're gonna you know start the next season that first home game here. I mean, you know just to be walking down uh, towards the ice and like hearing all the fans again getting back to that action and with that new seating and you know. Uh, that's going to make a huge difference over here. And like Jimmy said, I mean, uh, we're all getting a goosebumps here from this. And, uh, uh, yeah, we're all very excited. All right. I ask Zemi this every week, so i got to ask Jimmy this. <coughs> Give me three keys to victory this weekend. Uh, match their intensity. Uh, everybody stepping up, playing as one, and have fun. Last weekend, just have fun. Zemi, three keys. Three keys. <clears throat> well, you know, uh, if I go more uh, in the detail in the game, like we talk about all the time, it's, uh, you know, putting a puck from the net, having that net front f- presence, and, you know, physicality is going to be a huge fact against this team, you know, just matching it up, and again, don't allow them to match it up, always be that um, notch above them. And uh, third of all, like Jimmy said, I like what he said over there, uh, the intensity. The intensity has to be there right from the puck drop until the last whistle yeah. on the weekend. And Zimmy made a good point earlier. With the intensity, there's going to be a lot of uh, power plays and penalty kills and all that. So well, our special teams have really got to show up this weekend too. And one more time, we'll wrap it up here. Jimmy, uh, if folks don't already know, tell them how to get their tickets for this weekend. Well, you can come to the box office and get them up here. We're open from 9 to 5, or you can go online to uh, www. Uh, BlueRidgeBobcats.com slash tickets, or you can give uh, Jenna a call in the office at uh, 276-335-2100. Or you can, you can also email her. You can email her. Yeah. Or any groups that wants to come out, feel free. If you got 12 or more, we give a discount on that as well. Yep, and you get a uh, free bag of popcorn. Free bag of popcorn. That's there right. you go. Yeah, it's good popcorn, it. too. Doesn't matter better than that. It, <laughs> it, it is good, and, and we've got some fun stuff planned yeah. for after and game re- tomorrow night, too. That's right. we got a post-game sta- uh, a skate with the players afterwards, so uh, you can rent skates here for $3, or you can bring your own. So uh, be sure to do that right after the game tomorrow night. Almost forgot to mention, I have to ask both of you about this. Your thoughts on Connor Green and Igor Delcart being named uh, rookie all-stars? I think it's well deserved. Um, Connor has been great in that this year. Between him and Owen, I still say I think we got the best tandem in the league. Uh, Connor has really grown a lot. Um, I think he's going to be, if he's even in the league next year, <laughs> um, I think he's probably going to be one of the best in the league. Uh, Igor has surprised me a lot coming in. Um, he has grown from when I got here to now. He gets smarter and smarter every day. Um, and I mean, skating is great. So, I mean, he does – I think he's done real well as well. Yeah, um, you know, I'll start with Igor. Um, you know, I've been around both of them the whole season long on and off the ice, and they didn't grow just on the ice but also off the ice, their personality. And, you know, for Igor, uh, you know, trying to adapt to the North American side of the game, it took him a second at the start of the season. But, again, uh, I knew that potential he has, and that was the reason why I recruited him and wanted him to come here. And uh, he has shown it, you know. Like I said, he had to adapt to some uh, different systems. The game to be played a little differently, a little bit more physical. But there was his IQ and the vision and his skating ability he has. He definitely uh, deserves to be uh, named uh, um, all-star rookie.
season and greener uh you know coming in from a potsdam from a very very quality good school uh very good division and sunny so um again he was a guy i uh, was hoping to see what has happened that he's gonna be standout goalie through the whole season and he's he's one of those guys where you know we relied on him uh first half of the season um uh, the most you know having a couple goalies coming in and out and uh, having a christian getting hurt and end up being on the season ending ir then uh having a lisco coming in you know it was great to have and see that uh, once we acquired lisco age that him and uh green and they became not just competitors in the practice and pushing each other to be better but also very good friends and uh, always trying to make each other better right and that again that was a big point why i believe um greener ended up being where he is uh, getting that <coughs> all stars rookie of the season so uh yeah huge uh huge um excitement for both of these guys yeah. and before we go brett i what i want to say to everyone i think we all you know share the same sentiment is we want to thank the fans all the fans that came this year and 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 helped us out and and pulled for the bobcats and and pushed us to be better we want to thank you guys for coming out and we're looking for another great year to all the corporate partners that came on last year we want to thank you um you know we're looking forward to next year and building on and more um we appreciate everybody who has participated in the blue ridge bobcats this year and uh we're definitely looking forward to next year and and bringing the excitement and new things and and just and just next year's gonna be our year yep so yep. no yep. thank so you to there. yeah thank you to all uh you know the community thank you all you guys here and everybody um on the team and let's back it up for this love one more last weekend yeah, let, let, let's give these guys the, the biggest crowds we've seen yet this season. They, that these guys deserve it. They've worked hard all season long, and, and you know, I, I feel like that'd be the perfect way to send them off is if we can sell this place out. That's right. There's going to be some emotions uh, Saturday night, that's for sure. Yeah, we, we, there, there might be some sniffling a little bit <laughs> Saturday night. But uh, come on out and have some fun. Of course, we got the ice painting Saturday. We'll have tailgating and then the, uh, the auction after the game, and then we'll have the post-game skate uh, on Friday. And don't forget to wear camo. Like, mm -hmm. like that, that camo right there, you see it across the table. You get $1.50 off your ticket. All right, for Vice President of Operations, Jimmy Milliken, and 